Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ghosts and ghouls. My name is Fetch Buckle, and welcome to the spookiest radio show around. Bringing you the creepiest tale to keep you up at night. If you enjoy my show, give the bell a click to be notified when I go on air. Every Sunday we are live. Also, if you are a narrator or an author would like to be on my show, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Lucid will direct you to me. Now for this evening, we have a very special guest joining us for tonight's show. Without further ado, let's welcome our cool uncle, Uncle Chrono, Chrono Pasta. Who are you and how did I get here? Why are my hands tied? Oh, hey Fetch. Thanks for having me. I'd uh, shake your hands, but you know. It's an honor having you here, friend. Now before we get into the show, do tell us about yourself and what you do. Hands are tied. So, a little bit about me. Well, I like long walks on the beach and steak dinners. But I guess my passion really is horror. I've always been attuned to it, so to speak. I like to consider myself a harbinger of horror. Mostly just by narrating stories I find on the internet. I also write, too. Currently working on an episodic adventure called The House That Jack Built. I already had the first episode finished, and the second one's slowly coming. That's absolutely lovely. Now... I wanted to tell you about Krypton. Now, have you heard the tale of Smile Dark? Smile what? I, I don't think so. Also, what was that? I have no idea what you're talking about, but... I wonder who that could be. One moment, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Take your time. Hello. Mr. I sent me. You are now my new owner. It is a pleasure to be here. Woof. Interesting. How the hell are you talking? Your mouth is not even moving. Bork, bork, woof, woof. I can communicate only telepathically. Ah, I see. Interesting. Oh, please come in. Okay. I am back. Let's get started with the show. Oh, also, I got a new pet. Holy crap, what the hell is that? Bork. Hello, human. You can only hear me in your mind, but I'm just in the neighborhood. You know, spreading the word. Arf! Okay. Now, folks, it's time to dive into this evening's stories. So that being said, get comfortable, grab a snack, grab a blanket, grab some headphones, turn off the lights, and let's get ready to dive right into these stories. Take it away, Chrono. Rule one. Always lock your house up when the sun goes down. My town has an urban legend that has been passed down for decades now, dating back to the Great Depression. From this urban legend, everyone in town has become great at locking their windows and keeping the doors shut at night. It is said that if you keep your window open or a slight crack in the door, the click clacker will crawl its way into your home. I grew up here and have gotten used to my parents going around every night locking every window and door. It was automatic, and they tried their best to ingrain it into my school, just in case they ever had to leave me at home alone overnight. Now, I never saw the click clacker, but only ever heard the rumors at school about it. Some said it had an ugly human form, but its skin had a zipper stitched into it that supposedly went up the side of its face. The zipper wrapped around the thing's deformed body, and that's why they call it the click clacker. Because that's what the sound it supposedly makes when it's crawling on the floor or brushing against your window seal. Even the thought of the thing scared me to death. Every time I heard about it, just imagining skin being held together by a zipper that would clack against the floor as it crawled towards you? Ain't nothing worse than that. My fear of the thing only grew as I got older and got into middle school where the rumors of the click clacker grew to such a point that the kids are just trying to test if it were true or not. However, the police found out about them and they were all arrested. Their parents were enraged when they found out about their plan because they knew how stupid it was. It's illegal in my town to walk around the streets at night and to also leave open your windows and doors at night because of the stupid urban legend that has everyone so scared. I wish I can go and have sleepovers with my friends, but my parents in their own words said, don't want to risk it. Again, I've lived here my whole life and made it to middle school without seeing a sign of the click clacker even once. My town is filled with paranoia about it. My parents are leaving me home alone tonight because they're going on their first honeymoon without me. Since I'm 14, they think I'm old enough to stay home and know all the rules regarding locking up the house. It doesn't matter how old I am. I'm tired of living in 
fear of something that adults could have easily made up to scare children to not leaving the house at night and making sure to keep everything locked up. Tonight is when I'm going to test to see if the click clacker thing is really real, and I've been mentally creating a plan to safely do that. If the thing can't break through a simple glass window or wood door to get into a house, then it shouldn't be able to break through the bathroom door which I plan on hiding behind. So when my parents kissed me goodbye in the evening before they drove off, I was already prepared to encounter the beast. With a simple camera, I was going to get proof of the thing, even if it was probably most likely all made up. So that night, as the sun was falling down, I opened up one window that was on the side of the house, but not too much, because I didn't want to freeze. Then, I set up my camera so it would be able to view the window and record if something crawls through it. After completing these two parts of my plan, I went and sat at the wooden table while eating some frosted flakes. It was then I heard something slam on the side of the house. With so much force, the noise caused me to knock over my bowl of cereal. Glancing outside, I noticed that the sun hadn't gone down yet, but nonetheless, I ran to the bathroom, slamming the door as I entered. As I intensely listened to the sounds coming from outside, I heard the crunching of leaves and my heart pumped ferociously. Then I heard someone knocking on the door. Still scared to death, I shuffled over and opened it to find my neighbor Phil with his hands on his hips. He left the window open past the required time to close it. Parents were smart to have me check to see if he locked the place up. Oh, really? I thought for sure I locked everything up, I said, trying to act innocent. Well, you need to double check everything just in case, because you never know. Anyway, I wish you well and don't stir up too much trouble with your parents being out and all, Phil said as he turned and walked to his own home. I closed the door, but observed him from across the street for a little bit, just to see if he was going to come back. He wasn't, as I saw the shades of his window light up from the TV screen inside, so I decided to clean up the spilled cereal and finish eating. When I finished that, the sun had gone down, and I was ready to reenact the plan. So, opening the window again, I poked my head out to see if everyone was around, but luckily everyone had already sheltered into their homes. Leaving the window open, I went to the family room to play some video games to kill time. About 40 minutes in, the TV began to flicker. It was strange because it had never done that before. But I tried to continue to play, but the music turned distorted and then so high-pitched that the speakers blew out. Falling off the couch due to how abruptly the TV sound cut out caused my heart to race as the sound was so high-pitched that the neighbors had to have heard that. I was not about to get another talking to by Phil. I expected someone to come and knock on the door, but no one ever came. That's when the light bulb above me grew so bright that I was completely blinded by it until the fuse popped, leaving the family room in darkness. Then the kitchen light followed, then every other light in the house except the one from the hallway close to where I'd left the window open. I couldn't directly see the window, but I was sure glad that I couldn't. In shock, I heard the sound of a zipper clacking against glass. In my heart, I knew what was making it, and so quickly I darted to the bathroom and locked the door. Like before, I was listening to every sound that echoed from the hall. I now understood why everyone in town was freaked out by this urban legend. Because it was true. Or someone was playing an elaborate prank on me. Whatever was outside finally made it past the window as I heard it thump against the floor like a piece of dead meat. The tile caused its clacking to grow as it seemed to drag itself across the floor with heavy breathing. The wooden bathroom door had a small crack in it that was there before we bought it, so I peeked through. I didn't see anything, but a sort of pale darkness with a bright white dot in it, but that's when I heard the zipper rub against the door I was next to, creating a terrifying sound. Bouncing back, I realized that this thing was looking back at me. I was mentally freaking out as this clacking sounds grew as it tried to break through the door. I jumped in the bathtub and drew the curtains so at least the thing would not be able to see me. All through the night, it was crawling around trying to get to me, traumatizing me to this day of hearing any sharp and subtly pointed sounds. Laying in the tub, regretting everything I've done, I hear the clacking suddenly stop and a scratchy muttering voice whispering, you are mine. You just don't know it yet. Then, the thing began to crawl back away to the window. I didn't move a muscle as I heard it leave, 
pondering on the eerie words it left me with. In the morning, when the sun was brightly shining, I opened the door to find streaks of blood that were spread across the floor. After gazing at the damages to the TV, speakers, and lights, I knew my parents weren't going to be happy with me when they got back, so I spent the day cleaning everything until it was night again. I made sure to lock the entire house tonight. That's when I remembered that I left the camera recording that night, and so I watched the film, horrified to see the creature come into my house and how disturbing it looked. I zoomed through the tape but never saw the point where it actually left. My heart began rushing as I frantically kept scrolling through the tape, but not finding a single time it left the house. It was then I heard the attic door creak slowly open, followed by the click clacking. Well, that's a close for today's episode. I hope you all enjoyed today's show. Also, special thanks to Colonel Pasta for joining me this evening. If you guys want to give his channel a visit, I highly suggest you do. He has a variety of content that will captivate you. I'll link his info in the description below. But that's all for now. Thank you for tuning in and tune back in next Sunday. My name is Fetch Abaco. My name's Chrono Pasta. Pork, 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 woof, woof, woof. Nope, leave the mailman alone. No, no. Ah. Uh. Sign off.